Welcome to The Connection, a weekly radio program where we share our experiences and expertise with stories of caring, courage, and change right here in Connecticut. Listen to learn about needed resources to improve your well-being and transform your life. Now, here are the hosts of The Connection, Lisa dematis Lapore and Ann Baldwin. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of The Connection right here on WTIC News Talk 1080. I'm Ann Baldwin, one of the hosts of this program, and proud to be joined this morning by Beth Connor, who's also with The Connection. Beth, good morning. How are you today? Good morning. I'm great, Ann. How are you? Yeah, hanging in there. You know, um, we always talk about things could always be worse, so I'm trying to keep that in the back of my mind, and I've really enjoyed that the weather's been pretty decent it always helps. We don't have that seasonal depression going on on top of everything else. So that that's a plus for me anyway. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, it's hard to believe it's already November. I know. I know. The year has gone, very, gone by very quickly, very slowly, but very quickly. Yeah, in a lot <laughs> of ways. Well, I'm really excited, Beth, because we've got uh, all of our guests are special, but this is a special, special guest. Sarah Cody is joining us, and um, a lot of our listeners probably know Sarah from all of her years of reporting in the market, writing articles for the Hartford Current, and currently she's at WTNH Channel 8. And Sarah, I got to tell you, um, I, I'd like to call you a friend, and I hope I can, because I sit back and I admire, you know, your reporting on WTNH Channel 8 and your life on Facebook. You know, it all looks good on Facebook, Aww. but but your life looks really good on <laughs> Facebook. So thanks for being on the program Aww. with Beth and I. How are things going for you, Sarah? Things are okay, and thank you so much for having me here. I admire you so much and the contributions you've made to the local market for um, some time. So thank you. I'm really honored to be here, Beth. It's great to meet you. Thanks, Sarah. You too. I had to chuckle when you said the year had gone by fast because right? I think it's such so slow, and I'm ready for 2020 to be over. <laughs> Absolutely. I think everyone is. Yeah. So, Sarah, one of the things I wanted to talk about is, you know, I really, I love the fact that um, what you're doing at WTNH Channel 8 is they've really put you in a niche, um, a niche from the viewer's perspective of just telling caring stories, especially now during covid um, sitting down and talking one-on-one -on -one with people who might be struggling during COVID, whether it's substance abuse. I know you just did that story with Laura Ward. Um, how have you, yeah. how have you fun, kind of found that to be your path? Um, I would say I always sort of gravitated towards the features. I love to tell stories, and I think that there is a story around every corner. I, I really believe that. Um, and then when I took over the Mommy Minute column in the Hartford Current, when, gosh, my, my son who's 15 was three at the time, I think, when I took it over. Um, when I took over that column and then um, matched it with a TV segment on Fox 61, that's really kind of where my niche was born. Because when you match a column with a TV segment, it can't just all be your thoughts. You know, I really had to tap into inspiring parents and them advocating around the state in order to make it visual, too. So I once in a while would do a column about, you know, the tantrum that my child had and how I figured that out and help, hopes that it would help somebody else. But it was really the stories of the other parents in the state that um, got me going, that I really was excited to tell. Um, so when I jumped over to Channel 8, that was really what they were hoping I would bring to the table, those local inspiring stories that people love. You know, I feel that people are hungry for that, especially during this tough year. Definitely. And uh, I know, you know, people are sort of hanging on to the goodness out there and people sharing their stories. I know at The Connection, we have so many folks that are struggling. They're struggling anyway, but COVID has really added that extra layer of uh, angst. I uh, yeah. saw a news report the other day that uh, said that because of COVID, mental health issues are on the rise. And we're yeah. going to be seeing that moving forward. Um, substance abuse issues as well. So, you know, what are you seeing from your uh, standpoint with the folks that you're talking with, Sarah, on COVID and how it's affecting people's personal lives? Well, as Anne referenced, I had a special report air a few nights ago about the rise in alcohol use in everybody, but a sort of a startling statistic in women. Heavy drinking among women is up 41%. 
that was according wow. to a research letter published in the JAMA Open Network. And when I called, I called, you know, some psychiatrists that I'd worked with before, substance abuse experts. And when I called um, this certain doctor, Dr. Herrick, who works for Danbury Hospital, New Bombs Health, Danbury Hospital, New Milford Hospital, and Norwalk Hospital, he said to me, mental health issues are up in general. But yes, Mm -hmm. We've seen women's uh, drinking statistics rising since the early 2000s, and everybody I talked to seemed to attribute this to the pressure that women are under in terms of working from home, juggling the distance learning. We are the um, people that make connections with our family, right? Host the holidays, set the table, get the family and friends get together going, and all of that has been affected. So that this is just, you know, it's been a tough time for everybody, but, um, you know, certainly for for women. Well, and, you know, we know Laura Ward. Laura Ward has been on this program a couple of times, Sarah. And uh, she and I both have in common that we're both in long-term recovery. And I really admire Mm -hmm. what she's done with her recovery and how she's turned that into helping others. Uh, And it is hard. It's hard for everybody, Um, especially now with a lot of folks uh, like myself who were used to go into the 12-step programs. Uh, Now those are even virtual, which for me is not the same. Um, So it's you really have to rely on that seed that's been planted, I know I do, from a long time ago to stay on the straight and narrow because, you know, I know for me, um, one drink and I'm right down the rabbit hole. So it's so hard for people out there and just... You know, if you are listening, it's not the answer. It, you know, it makes you feel maybe a little bit better for a little while, but the consequences and the long-term impacts are really not worth it. So I'm hoping that people hear that that message loud and clear. What was one of the, the key messages or, or the main points that you got out of sitting down and talking with Laura? Well, I've known Laura professionally like you have for years, and I've always admired her work. And I, when she came public with her story a few years ago of uh, alcoholism, I was so impressed with her candor and her bravery in coming forward to help others. And I think the takeaway was really the last soundbite that I used in the piece was that if you're questioning whether or not you're drinking too much, you have your answer right there. You know, and Mm. and it's not for everybody a matter of stopping or, you know, for some people it might be cutting back. But if you're asking yourself that question, that's significant. Um, and I, I did a story a few weeks ago. It just You were talking about the different programs that haven't been able to meet during uh, COVID. I did a story about a grief group, a, an amazing grief center, Brian's Healing Hearts and Hope in Niantic, founded by this amazing mother who lost her son to suicide and then opened this center to help everyone else. And I lost my dad almost exactly a year ago. The um, anniversary is Sunday. And my elderly mother has been not only grieving him, but alone during the, very alone during the pandemic. And, you know, when I covered the story about the grief group, they were just beginning to meet again. And the woman who founded it said, being together and having those connections is so important for people grieving. And that has been, they tried over Zoom, they did this and that, but it's not the same. And getting everyone together again made everyone feel better. So I think anyone going through the sort of a personal turmoil right now, this has really just added to it. It's been tough. Yeah, we all miss that personal interaction. Uh, and I mm-hmm. think as, you know, humans, we thrive on that. Um, we, we've even talked about it at the office here. Uh, you know, not seeing folks or being isolated in your office and not being able to chat at the water cooler or, or mm-hmm. you know, be around a table at a meeting. It, it's really a different way of, of working, and there is something that gets lost in translation there. Um, yeah. You know, you don't have the connections that we've had before. And you can't even give right. someone a hug. Right. I'm a hugger. You know, I love my hugs. Right. And you can't even get a good hug. If you're just tuning in, we're speaking with Sarah Cody from WTNH Channel 8 in New Haven. Um, Sarah, I know I remember back in the day, my days at Channel 30, I did a story on a little girl who was um, diagnosed with leukemia. And I did the story, and it was just such a moving mo- moment that I, I became, you know, friendly with the family, and um, I just uh, I just kind of 
followed their journey. And I'll never forget the night that I did the story that she had passed. She lost her battle. And it was oh. kind of one of my one of my stories that I followed for the viewers that I kept people, you know, posted and updated. And then the night that I had to announce when I was anchoring the news that she had passed. And I think that's the only time and the first time that I ever cried during live television. Uh, but you get emotionally attached, don't you? Yes. Yes, you do. And I do a lot of those stories, too. And gosh, the ones that turn out good with the people who make it and defy the odds um, are what you want to hear because those tough ones are 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 very, very sad. I did a, a story about a young woman um, battling metastatic breast cancer and during her battle, and young, in her 20s, and during her battle reached out to find her birth family because she had been adopted. And it was such an emotional story and she was such an amazing woman and uh, she passed away too and it just, you know, I went to the funeral and those, some of the stories just really stick with you. And uh, But I, at the same time, I'm sure you felt the same way was honored to tell her story and was honored to give her that that platform and that voice when she wanted it. So it's fulfilling in, in, in a way. And, and that's the thing, too, with a lot of the stories, absolutely, Sarah, to that point. You know, of the, of the people's stories that we tell on this program, Beth, here from The Connection, you know, the stories of, uh -huh. of thriving and surviving and individuals who... Um, for one reason or another, might have ended up where they didn't want to be. They might have been incarcerated. They might have been suffering from substance abuse. Uh, their children are in DCF custody, and they want to get them back. So all of these things and all these stories that we can share of inspiration and strength and hope um, hopefully gives other people the inspiration you know, to take whatever they're dealing with to the next step and be successful, because that's all we've got. I that's agree. Right. I come home and we, we sit around the table and I tell my boys at dinner about all these different people and then I'll show them my piece. And um, my my 15 year old actually said to me recently, Mom, I feel like I know so much about lots of different things because all the people you've shown me and introduced me to, I just, I get very excited and inspired by people's strength and courage and character. Um, so I do. I, 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 I see the stories resonating and it, it makes me feel good. Well, and what a great message for your boys, too. Uh, oftentimes, kids these days don't see sort of, you know, they, they may grow up in a more privileged way, and they don't see really what's going on around them. And for you yeah. to be bringing that, that home, I know I've done that working in uh, nonprofit work. I've, I've done the same and asked my children to, to help and, you know, volunteer their time and give back because they were brought up in a more fortunate way than many. Um, right. So what a, what a great uh, legacy for you to hand down to your children. You know, the other piece is that you um, cover the kind of stories that you can sit and talk about around the dinner table, right, Sarah? Um, and and yeah. not, not all of us can. I mean, sometimes my kids would say, you know, what'd you do today? And I didn't really want to talk about it. But with the stories that you cover and the fact that I really applaud WTNH for letting you stay in that in that space. I know you probably got to do breaking news every now and then, but, um, you know, that's really a gift that you don't get in this industry that much anymore, where someone will let you do what you love to do and tell the stories that really matter to people that are out there watching the station. It, it is a gift and they value it and they saw the value in it and they saw the, um, response, I think, and the, the, the reaction. So yes, I, I feel very lucky and to have this unique niche that, um, you know, is very fulfilling to me. I enjoy my work. So I know you've done a, a number of interviews with uh, not only local people, but also celebrities and famous people. Can you tell our listeners about maybe one of your favorite um, high profile interviews that you've done? <laughs> that was a fun, um, I don't know, two years maybe where I was doing the celebrity interviews long, fairly long time ago, but it was, uh, it was really fun. Julie Andrews I interviewed at the Good Speed, and, you know, uh, growing up a Sound of Music fan, that was just thrilling, and she could have, she could not have been more lovely. Um, I, I laugh about my Mark Wahlberg story sometimes. we I approached him at an event at Mohegan Sun, and I'm from Boston, and we're about the same age, and I think at the time we had both just had babies. So I approached him just with this, like, hey, I'm, I'm from Boston, too, this very sort of familiar approach. And uh -huh. he was wonderful, like, a, like an old friend. And as, as we parted ways, he kissed me on the cheek. And I was like, oh, my 
I just lost my mind. Oh, oh that's great. <laughs> that was, that's great. That was, fun, that was a fun time. We've been seeing Nelly dance on um, Dancing with the Stars, and every time I watch it on Monday nights, I smile because I interviewed him at one of the casinos, too, and super, duper nice guy. Lots of laughs. We had a lot of fun. So um, that, that, was a, that was a fun time in my life. See, sure. now today he couldn't kiss yeah. you on the cheek. Right. You know, Sarah, you just couldn't get that little kiss that you got back then. So, you know. <laughs> Maybe not, but, it, you know, it, it was, it's a memory, and it was really funny. In those, I, was, I, like, I was just losing it. Those memories are so much fun. I know people ask me. Well, the number one question I get, and I've been doing – Baldwin Media now for 22 years, believe it or not. Do you ever miss it? And I do miss those times where, like you, I did a lot of feature reporting. And probably I got to share with with our listeners and with you guys uh, my favorite interview that I ever did. My ex husband was a news photog, so they would always send us, you know, to do these things together, which I'm not sure was a good idea because that didn't work out. But anyway, so <laughs> they they sent us both to another show. Right, that's a whole nother show, a whole nother topic. But they, they, they sent us to Los Angeles for Bob Hope's 80th birthday party. So we pack oh, up. Wow. Oh my God, it was unbelievable. So we pack up and I'm like, I, you know, I brought all these really great outfits because I'm like, damn it, I'm going to Bob Hope's 80th birthday party. I'm going to dress the part. So we did. We both got really dressed up and then we had the NBC peacock on our camera. Well, what happened was they thought we were the network. So they're like, okay, you know, come on in, come on in. So they take us into the green room and who isn't standing there? Bob Hope, George Burns, Walter Cronkite. Oh yeah. I was, I know it was one of those pinch me moments. It was incredible. Yes. Yes. And then um, I had to get a picture, you know, and I always took a picture. Whenever I took a picture with a celebrity, I said, can I hold you like I know you? And only one celebrity (laughs) said no. And that was Tom Selleck because he's a germaphobe. So I've got all these great pictures. (laughs) My most cherished moment and my most cherished photo is my picture of Bob Hope and I like holding each other like we know each other. And then he signed... Um, some music for me. Thanks for the memories. Some sheet music. How great is that? Oh, that I got the chills, Dan. Yeah. I know. Yes. What a story. I know. That's it was a great story. Yeah. So there's two messages there. I mean, one is, you know, show up like you're supposed to be there and nobody questions it. Like I've always said that. <laughs> you could crash any wedding, any big event if you just dress the part and walk in like it's nobody's business. That's it. That's so funny. Yeah, that was you know, fun. I interviewed all those celebrities before, like, the everyone had a cell phone in their pocket before social media. And, you know, I could go back and look at the pieces and make a still frame, I suppose. But it's not like I have snapshots with everybody like you would have now. Can you imagine my social media now? It would be crazy. I know, I know. <laughs> but I made it a point to always carry a camera because I just don't want to miss these moments. That was and smart. Yeah, and on the same trip, I got to meet Jay Leno, um... Uh, Sam Elliott, oh my God, who I've always had a huge crush on. He's just such a good looking man. Um, So those are the Mm -hmm. things that I do miss about it are the people that you get to meet and and getting to know those folks. So that's fun. So what do you have on your plate? What's coming up? What are you working on now, Sarah? Oh gosh, what am I working on now? I have a story airing next week about um, kids coming home for Thanksgiving from college and how they should prepare and that kind of thing during this you know, bizarre time. Um, I just aired a piece about epilepsy awareness where a really amazing woman from Milford shared her story and really feels that not enough people know um, about that. And I recently did a story with this incredible family that founded Jamie's Run after losing their um, baby, small baby, a couple mm. months old to cancer. Oh. And they have just turned around and said, you know, what, what good can we do for families going through this too? Um, so I've, I've got a lot of good stuff on my plate, like usual. Well, and that's going to be the challenge, right? Thanksgiving. Now they're saying, you know, it's it's under so many people. I know, Beth, that, you know, you've got adult children that you want to bring around your table. Uh-huh. Sarah, you've got your two boys. I mean, what is Thanksgiving going to mm-hmm. look like this year? I guess that's really the next big question. I think it's I think it's changing daily. I think we're going to see a lot change between now and Thanksgiving, and we're just going to kind of hunker down. My, you know, as I said, my mother has been very alone through this, and she, I said, we can get tests, Mom. You can come down. She said, no, I don't feel that they're entirely reliable or that the timing would be perfect, and I'm okay. Uh, so I think we're really going to lay low this year, and it's too bad, but on the other hand, 
um, like people did with Halloween and that kind of thing. We're going to have to make the most of it. Yeah, I think people are keeping their circles small and, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just relishing what they have. I know know that's what we're doing this year. We have a smaller group coming, and we're just looking forward to being with one another and celebrating the day. Well, I know. Um, Yep. Yep. Not, Not what it used to be. And I'm going to be hopping on a plane to go to Texas because, Sarah, you'll appreciate this. My daughter has tried to marry this man twice, uh, only due to COVID. Oh, yes, to have the, to oh, have her no. wedding um, postponed, postponed. But now we're doing it. We're going to go down to Galveston. She's going to get married on the beach. Okay. It's going to be a wedding of oh, wow. 10 people only and all, yep. cl- all close family. And I'm like, you know, life at some point just has to go on. So I'm looking mm-hmm. forward to that and, and looking forward to her finally marrying the man of her dreams. And, you know, that's, wow. that's yeah, it's going to be a fun time, a fun trip, except for I was, I bought the dress for the big fancy reception, you know, hall. <laughs> and now I got to go to beachwear. So that's been my biggest challenge. You got to get the beachwear. <laughs> You'll save the dress for something else, something fabulous, man. Yeah, and well, let's I'm so. I'm sorry she's had to, uh, I'm sorry she's had to delay it, but... It sounds like it's going to be special. It will be. Well, Third time's the charm. Yeah. Well, it's actually her second time, but first time with this guy. We won't get into those details. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, he, that's a whole not. We could do episodes on just people's lives. <laughs> but it's also, I, I fly down there the day of my um, granddaughter. I have a granddaughter with my daughter, and she's going to be nine that day. And she's also got her Super Bowl last cheerleading thing, so I get to see that. Oh, and then eat wow. some, yeah, and then eat some turkey, and then have a wedding. So I've got a fun-filled, packed little trip ahead of me, and I'm looking forward to I it. I guess so. You got to bring a lot of masks and a lot of sanitizer. And I just heard when I was doing my story about college kids, don't eat or drink on the plane. Did you know that? Yeah. Why is oh. that? Mm. I don't know. I think they just feel you take your mask off, and it would be sort of a oh. opportunity for spreading. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a that's a good point. Okay, good I'll keep that in mind. Well, Sarah Cody, keep the this mask on. absolutely. Uh, this this conversation went by so quickly. This was so much fun talking to you. Um, keep up the good work. I I just I do. I admire. You know, I know you live along the shoreline. You, your boys are so handsome, and you love to go boating. Huh. And you just you, I just love it. I love it I when do. I. When I can like look at somebody's life from afar, and it just sounds like you've you've got a lot going on in a good way. So thank you wow. for taking your precious well, time to you, be Anne. with Beth and I. It was a thrill. Thank, thank you, you, Sarah, so much for having me. It was a lot of fun. Nice to meet you, Beth. And I hope it was I a see pleasure you meeting you. Travels. Thank you very much, and you can uh, check out all the wedding photos on Facebook. Awesome. <laughs> all right, Sarah. Take care. Beth, well, this was a fun one. It's always nice to talk to somebody who's so well known and, you know, has such a a presence in our community. And it's just so great. I just always look forward to Sarah's reporting because it's, you know, it's not always a happy ending, but it's just kind of the stuff that warms your heart. And I think we do need more of that these days. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, this was a great, uh, great time with uh, interviewing Sarah. And I'm really uh, happy that she was able to join us today. Absolutely, and we want to wish everybody out there, regardless of what your plans are, a very safe and happy Thanksgiving because it's right around the corner. So do what you got to do and try to make the best memories you can during these difficult times. That's all we can do. So thank you all for tuning into this edition of The Connection right here on WTIC News Talk 1080. Mm-hmm.